Hi, today we're at the Biltmore Estate in Asheville, North Carolina. We have season passes here and we come here frequently. But I thought today I would take you inside this beautiful mansion and show you some of the rooms. Come along with me. When 33-year-old George Vanderbilt welcomed family and friends to the Biltmore Estate on Christmas Eve in 1895, it marked the formal opening of the most ambitious home ever conceived in America. It took six years to create the 250-room mansion with 33 family and guest bedrooms, 43 bathrooms, 65 fireplaces, three kitchens, and an indoor swimming pool. The ground encompassed 125,000 acres of forests, farms, and a dairy, a 250-acre wooded park, five pleasure gardens, and 30 miles of roadways. What began as George Vanderbilt's vision of a country retreat became the largest private residence in America and stands to this day as a celebrated historic landmark. Here, off to the left of the house, we see the walled garden. With its soaring limestone arches, marble and bronze fountain sculpture, and polished marble floor, the entrance hall is an impressive introduction to the house. Located in the bachelor's wing, the billiard room provided a retreat for the Vanderbilt's male guests. There are concealed doors on either side of the fireplace leading to other rooms in the wing. The banquet hall is the largest room in the house. It was in this space that the Vanderbilts dined, whether at a table for two or 32. It was also in this room that they held their annual Christmas festivities, a tradition that continues to this day. This room measures 72 feet long by 42 feet wide with a 70 foot high barrel vaulted ceiling. Designed on a more intimate scale than the banquet hall, the breakfast room was intended for less formal dining at breakfast and luncheon. The salon has been designated as a formal sitting room and furnished with elegant examples of French classical styles from the 1700s from George Vanderbilt's original collection. The music room remained unfinished for 81 years. It was completed and opened in 1976. It is decorated in the French Renaissance style. The loggia, or porch, is off the entrance hall and provides beautiful views of the Blue Ridge Mountains. The library best reflects Mr. Vanderbilt's intellect and personality. He was an avid reader and book lover from childhood. He collected more than 22,000 volumes, about 10,000 of which are housed in the library's walnut stacks. Off the entrance hall, the tapestry gallery, this 90-foot long room, served as a sitting room. It was also designed to display three silk and wool tapestries woven in Brussels around 1530. The 102-step grand staircase stretches to the fourth floor. Hanging through its center is a large wrought iron chandelier illuminated by 72 electric bulbs and suspended from a single point. In 2013, the second floor living hall was returned to its original function as a picture gallery and formal hallway. It provided access to adjacent family and guest areas of the house. During the Vanderbilt's time, their guests may have assembled briefly here before going down the grand staircase for the evening meal. Next, we climb the grand staircase to Mr. Vanderbilt's bedroom. Here, he surrounded himself with the art objects he loved. The door beside the bed is his bath. 
Mr. and Mrs. Vanderbilt shared breakfast in the oak sitting room. This room connected their private quarters. Edith Stuyvesant Dresser was born in 1873 and married George Vanderbilt in 1898. Edith was a compassionate person who was very involved with the families who worked on the Biltmore estate as well as the surrounding community. After her husband's death in March 1914, she continued her work for the community. Later, she decided to honor George Vanderbilt, her husband, by selling 87,000 acres to create the Pisgah National Forest for the public to enjoy. Next, we travel through the third floor print hallway to the third floor living hall. This room served as a sitting area and upstairs library for guests staying on the third floor. They could take tea, play parlor games, curl up with a book, or listen to the player piano. Next are several of the many guest rooms available at the Biltmore House. Although Biltmore House was plumbed with hot and cold running water when it was completed in 1895, it was still customary for guests to use basins in their bedrooms to wash their hands and faces with hot water brought by household staff members. Therefore, most of the 43 bathrooms do not have sinks, such as this one. On my next visit, I will take you downstairs in the house where the servants lived and worked. You will also see some amazing recreational activities provided for the guests. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.